Welcome back. I'm Pete, and you're watching the Custom Car Channel. Today we got a 2012 GMC Sierra, or at least that's what the guy said. But it's a Silverado. Anyways, we're gonna. I'm gonna do. It's got a code for the for the oil pressure sending unit, and he just wants me to change it. Actually, it has 17 DTCs, but it's a P0521. Engine oil pressure sensor performance. So we're just, it, it's going to be cheaper for me just to slap a sensor in it than it is to diagnose it, and hopefully that takes care of it. I'm going to have to call them on the rest of this. There's a page and a half. I just figured I'd get started on it, and I'll bring you guys along. It's going to be hard for me to film back in there. And I'm not sure if the two, tw 2012 was the one we got to pull the intake on, but I don't pull the intakes anyways. I can reach back there and I can get them out. So this one looks like it's not as hard as some of them I've done. So let's get started. So I've been getting a, a lot of these uh, old Chevy trucks in. I guess this one's not quite as old, but and since this one's a Silverado, maybe you guys could just call me the the Silverado man. I don't know. One time at, at work, uh, where I used to work, the one guy called me, um, the secretary by accident called me Steve. And then after that, every once in a while, they just called me Steve. I don't care. All right, let's, let's get at it. So I did bring it in last night, just uh, I needed to know if it was a round connector or an oval connector. So I was able to unplug it, but it's right, it's right back there. And this one's got this shield, so I was able to get it unplugged. And you guys are not going to be able to see anything, but there doesn't appear to be a lock on it. Alright, so I got it unplugged. And there's there's the connector hopefully you guys can see that because I can't see what you guys are watching and I'm gonna try a long socket maybe a wobble or something kind of see it right in the bottom of the screen there the connectors off let me um let me get a tool I know I so that plastic cover there appears to be a bolt going straight in from the back you know I can get that out of there but I'm not going to take that off okay I just got the socket on there and you guys cannot see this is not going to be easy so I got my long uh, sensor socket on it I got a wobble extension and a, like a five and a half inch straight extension. You can kind of see it there. I'm having a heck of a time of lighting today. So maybe there. So I don't want to take that, that plastic cover off this, this doodad because there's a bolt coming straight in from the back. Probably take me longer to do that then it would just to unscrew this sensor and reach my hand back there and pull the screen out and put another one in so I'm gonna grab a ratchet that shouldn't be too tight but we'll see I stand that up get my hand here so I broke it loose and there's one more thing I'm gonna do before I screw it out of there I'm gonna go get the See if I can get it off now. So there's part of it that came out. That's my wobble. I'll just leave that socket on it for now. I'm gonna blow, I'm gonna blow some air down there and get a mirror so I don't knock anything in the, the oil pressure porthole. Said this one's just a little bit harder to, to film. Not doing good. 
I did try my endoscope to see if that could, would work, and I can't figure that one out either. All right, I'm just gonna reach back there and unscrew that thing. Take the socket off, so I'm just using a, a long sensor socket. And there she is. I'm gonna set that over on the bench and we'll compare it to the new one, which I got. The guy just wanted the cheap one, the Dorman, so I got the Dorman one with the screen, it's a kit. I told him I'd rather put a GM one in it. But actually, they were like 75 bucks. So, for a GM one. So, we'll just see, compared to this, it doesn't look like this has been changed anytime soon. But for right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that screen out of there, and I know I can do it. So I'm gonna go get a little tool, and pull that screen out of there. Once I get that screen out of there, we'll, we'll go over at the bench, and compare parts. And I can see the hole. And it is clean. You know what? I think the screen is gone on this one. Let me verify that. No, it's in there. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but... That screen just seems like it was a it's a little bit farther down in there than what I'm used to. What, not that I'm used to, but from what I remember. And now, there we go. I was going to see the, the mirror stuck. Yeah, it's, it's kind of way back in there. But it can surely be done. I got it. So, there's the screen. And that doesn't look too bad. Alright, let's go over to the bench. Okay, we're over here. I'm gonna have to. I always gotta do this. I'm not a good camera person. So, I'm probably gonna have to get you guys closer even. So, here's our original sensor. Here's that screen. There appears to be, you know, a little bit on the screen. So it could have been clogging up. It's probably impossible for you guys to see. Whatever. Let's see if I can see any numbers on this one, because I don't. Yeah, there's a number. One, two, six, seven, three, one, three, four. And number number underneath it, eight, two, zero, seven, C. This one is three, zero, P, S, zero, zero, two, eight. Then a three, one, four, six, C. So, the backwards. That's PPE plus PA GF30. What does this one say? PPE plus PA GF30. So, either this is a Dorman sensor also, because these are the same, same sensors. Yeah, they're the same. Or, or these are just rebox GMs. I don't know if you get, if you guys have the answer to that. I'd like to know. As far as the oil screen, I don't know. Yeah, 
There's absolutely no numbers on that. I don't see any numbers. There is an O-ring in the middle that we're going to have to put some oil on. What else was I going to say? So there's thread sealer on there ready and there's this gasket which does not fall off. There doesn't appear to be any numbers on any of the other parts. Yeah, I guess I would like to know what these numbers are. I think I'm going to write these down real quick. And then I'll research this later and maybe I can come up with something. I'm going to screw this back in, tighten it up, and put it back together. Then, then I'll... Then I need to call the customer and we need to go over his work order because, uh... Well, not his work order, but his, uh, inspection, his scan report of 17 DTCs. Whatever, dude. Oh, yeah, you guys want to see the Dorman number? So here's the box with the Dorman. I'll just let you read that. Maybe you can't. 926-041. It's a kit. comes with the sensor and the screen. Sensor and the screen. So I just took a little screwdriver, and this is a very cheap Chinese one, but you could do it with any little screwdriver. And I, um, I don't know if you can see that, but I bent the end over, and I made a really cool tool out of it. I use this all the time, for real. But anyways, yeah. Alright, Silverado. I'm coming back in and I'm gonna use this little screwdriver to push it back down into the hole once I push it in there with my fingers and it goes in so the opening is on the top the, all the screen parts go to the bottom and I got the new sensor in my hand and I'm just leaning over this I need like a what I don't know one of them old creepers that go over the top and over the top creeper I need one of those I don't have room for it. Alright. I'm going back in. And maybe I'll move you guys a little more to the side. There. So, I can't film back in there. I've tried, I tried, I tried to use my, my endoscope. I can't get it. So you just gotta reach back in here. And I can see the hole. So I got it dropped down in there. You know, they did they did put a little side area there. So I think they do mean for you to change the sensor just how I'm doing it. Alright. That screen popped down. I felt that the old ring go in. So she popped down like a little bit less than a quarter of an inch after I dropped it in there. So I'd say it's, it's down in there almost three quarters of an inch. But I did feel it where the O-ring, where the O-ring slips in, I did feel that. Felt like three, three sixteenths of an inch. Alright, I'm going for this one next. Okay, I got it started about as far as I can get it with my fingers. Now I'm going to slip this socket on. I have the socket slipped on. I'm going to slip the extension on. Alright, finally got it. Alright, it's up to the washer. I don't know how much I'm going to give it. I don't want to break it. Alright, that's about as tight as I can get it anyways. It did not break, so now I can pull all the stuff off. I don't know if it was just at the wrong angle, but I had a hard time getting that off there. All right now I'm gonna I'm gonna pop the wire back on.
All right, finally got it. This one's where the clip is. There's a slightly different spot. And it's actually in a better spot now. So I believe that's it. Besides, I'll put this cover back on. I guess we could do that real quick. At least you'll be able to see me do that. And then I got, when we put that on, I'll show you something. So when you go to put these covers on, you know, they like to stick on. So I'll give a little shot of grease on these. Here. Might have got a little much in there. Wipe some of that out. Because when I went to go pull this cover off, I could get, not get it off. Even though it's super hot outside. No, I'm just kidding. It's like, I got up this morning, and it's minus, or it's three degrees. But I took this cover off last night when I brought it in. And just like that, there she is. So, I'll talk to you in a second when I can look at you. Just like that, uh, we were able to um, change the oil pressure sensor on your 2012 uh, Chevy 1500 Silverado. I'm the Silverado man, remember that? Anyways, in reality, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time trying to get the camera set up, trying to get it so you guys could see what you couldn't do. But in reality, I could probably change one of these in and out, in and out the door in 10 minutes. So, this is a little bit easier one than I've done before. But even, even the newer ones, you just go right back to the same way I just did this one. And it's, it's that simple. You don't have to pull the intake. Although this, this truck is leaking some oil, so I'm going to check that out. Maybe the intake's got to come off anyways. Maybe that cover underneath there is leaking. Maybe it's the cover on the back by the, in the back of the engine. Maybe it's the oil pan. Uh, they all leak on the oil cooler lines. But I noticed I brought it in here last night just to check that out, and it left a couple drops on the floor. So I'm gonna put that in my inspection report, and I'm gonna give the customer a call. And all I have today that, that I can work on this truck, cause I got a couple of cars coming in tomorrow. So I guess all right, guys. Thanks for watching, and that was a pretty simple do-it-yourself repair. You might have to buy a, a socket. I'm sure you guys have one. You might have to take one of your pocket screwdrivers and bend the end over. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Then you have a new tool. You'd be so excited. All right, so um, thanks for watching, and maybe this is going to be a short video. 15 minutes, you think? All right, guys, I'll catch you next time. No, no, no. You can catch me next time.